Hey, what's good, everyone? Request man here. Look at the neutral safety switch right here, just underneath the emergency bypass instructions. Neutral safety switch. In a previous video, when I thought the starter was broken, it turned out to be this. And it's jiggling these two wires right here. Actually, I have one here on the side. These two wires right here. I'm jiggling those two wires. Got to start. Got this thing in a couple days ago, so it's time to change it out. So what happens is what this thing does, it doesn't allow you to start the machine while it's in gear. That means while the pedal is pressed down, we either have the transmission lever forward or reverse. If you have it in neutral and the pedal pressed down, you're good to go. But this just doesn't allow you to start it because obviously, you know, I think you don't want to start it like a car or in gear. The machine will start moving on you in that case. So that's what this does right here. So a couple of things I'm going to do. I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to get the voltmeter out, the voltmeter we have here, and show you the continuity on this and how it works. And in this position right here, I don't know if the proper term is continuity, but it shows an open, excuse me, a closed loop where it's, it signals going through. And in this position here, in this position here, there's no signal, no continuity. The loop is open, so to say. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you how this thing works, how it goes back and forth. I don't have a second person with me, be nice. It's gonna have to press the pedal and move the lever back and forth up in the cab. And I'm gonna shout out exactly what I'm doing. If you can't hear me, I put the words up there to see how this thing moves back and forth. Because this is what determines forward, neutral, and reverse. Uh, but doesn't re don't really tell unless the pedal is pressed. You can't tell what position it is until you press the pedal. So let me go up there, move some stuff around so you can see exactly how this thing works here. All right, so I'm moving the lever forward, reverse, forward and reverse. Now it's in neutral, nothing's going on. I'm gonna put the pedal down while it's in neutral. So nothing's moving, it's in neutral. Let's go to forward, all the way forward. Pedal down. So pedal all the way down, all the way up, all the way down, all the way up. Neutral position, go to reverse. You can tell it moves backward in reverse. So and this is full reverse, full forward. Full reverse, pull forward here. So that's how you, it operates. So if it's in this position here, forward with the pedal down, it won't let you start it. But if I have the, the lever in neutral, if it's neutral here, it's not going to move. So it's, it's in that safety area there. So then, first thing going backwards. So we're going to have to tune this thing so it's right in the butter zone. So it's not going to start in this position right here. Let's go a little bit forward just to see how far it goes forward. So I just have this thing maybe a quarter lever, quarter forward. It just goes up a little bit. Now all the way forward, you can see there's more travel in it. So just a little forward and all the way forward. So you can see right there how the neutral safety switch works and how it it shifts gears from forward to reverse. You can't see it, but there is a linkage connected to the transmission here. So all you're doing is reversing the flow of the liquid. And this thing right here is just kind of hooked to it. Let's go ahead and try to set everything up right here. The voltmeter. So I'm gonna need a couple hands here. So I have this thing set right here to, for continuity. I do a different video on how to use the voltmeter. Just for the basics, continuity, DC, AC. But right now, if I touch these two together you see the needle is going to jump right there and it depending on how it's set it should go all the way to all the way to zero right there so so it's just it's good to test fuses loops and wires a lot of different things you could test in continuity to see if the circuit is complete so bringing this thing over here i'm not sure if i could be able to do this I'm just gonna have to stick the probes in here. And this one doesn't want to stay in very well. All right, I think I got it here. So you can see right now, it's in this position right here. It, in the middle, you can see it has continuity. It's gonna, it's a closed circuit. I don't know all the proper terms. So if I move it to like the reverse position, you can see it, the voltmeter goes down. So the circuit's open. I go right to the middle again. It's closed, closed circuit, and you go to reverse or forward, whichever orientation it is. Now it goes back to zero. So 
And you have the middle position right here. Let me get it right here into middle position. You can feel it kind of click. There's a little click, a little switch in that middle position where you have the switch is closed, so to say. And I'm kind of, it's kind of hard to hold it. This one here, I could get a probe in this one easy right here, but this one I'm having a hard time touching the probe on it. But that's how you test continuity on the circuit like this to make sure something like this is working. Now it's working right now, and I think really what it is, it's, it's just a, some kind of, there's a loose wire in here. So you jiggle that wire, okay, we'll open it up, see how it looks like and how it works. Put the voltmeter on the bench. Uh, I'll try to get some, um, I'll tape it, the, the probes on so I, don't, I can use both hands and get a good look at it. So let's go ahead and take this thing apart. What I'm gonna need, I already know it's gonna be like a half inch, maybe 13 millimeter, half inch seemed kinda of loose, but the 13 seemed kinda of loose, 12 is too big, too small, so I'm gonna go with the half inch right there, and there is a little roll pin on the other side here, a cotter pin, we're gonna have to get a screwdriver and some pliers to get off. It's gonna, it's get bolts on with this, this, these holes right here, and then there is this thing sits like this, pointing it out, and there's a little pin that goes right through that hole here on the other side. I think that getting this thing off right here is gonna be one of the hardest parts, as well as getting this thing set. Uh, there's a way to adjust this thing, so it's right now it should be. Uh, if I unplug the plugs, just go and do it. Just go and plug the plugs right here. I think the next order of business is going to be to unloosen this pin right here. Let's see if I can show you a better, better view. Because I'm not going to be able to show you it as I do it. But you have a this is a little pin right there. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of a bad angle right there. My finger right there. That's what we're going to try to get at. It's upside down. <laughs> so we're going to. I got off my finger, so I got a screwdriver. I'm just gonna get a flathead, straight nose, the pin out, and pull it from the bottom. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen the bolt here first to take this thing off to orientate this in a different orientation. And get it to go this way and pull it out because right now I have to pull it down and get this bolt right there, and that's not gonna happen. So we go ahead and and loosen this bolt right here. I'm able to slide a wrench into here because this is going to spin at the same time. That wasn't on very tight. I mean, it was tight, but it wasn't like cranked on. Let's so get this off without losing everything. There's two washers here to pull it, so we drop it. So we should be able to slide this thing out here, maybe. Okay, now that I have it, I just took a, a wood block, levers forward, and blocked the pedal. So I need some room to work with here. I need to get this pin out. This pin actually is accessible. So I'm gonna try to... Okay, just needs to, just needs to pull it just a little bit. It's almost kind of threaded in there. There you go. There is a copper sleeve, so you don't want to lose that. Okay, and that's an Allen key on this bolt that holds the wire on. I'm gonna call it I don't know how I'm gonna get it on, but I know how I'm gonna get it off. There we go. Save the washer. Yeah, you stuck on there, aren't you? There you go. All right, so here is the old switch. We'll put this back in right there. And you can see there's a little copper. That's what closes the switch in there. It's probably gonna be something that could be repaired. I'll open up and I'll take a look at it, clean it up. Maybe it could be something you could use as a backup switch. This one right here, here's the new switch. We're gonna have to get it tuned. You can see right there is a slot. I don't know if you see very well there, but there is a little slot. Yeah, you can see there between the tubes. We're gonna have to get this thing just right. 
And I think the hardest thing is going to get this pin back on. And you can't see, but there's a little piece of metal on the other side that I was fighting against. Um, yeah, I, I suppose I could take it out like that and put it back in to get that pin back in. Do a little Carter pin right here. You can tell it's kind of, it's got some, uh, Got some curve to it, so you could tell it was deformed trying to get in there. Alright, got it, Chapter. So, from niggling there, this is how I'm going to approach it, stick it on this way. Because the holes go horizontal. Let me get these pins rolled over here. Keep my finger probably easier. God, I think it's gonna break. Uh, please don't break. Okay, all right. Wasn't ideal, but I got it in there. Again, remember there's a washer that goes on this side. So now let's go ahead and slide this thing on. This is the new one, right? No, this is the old one. No, this is the new one. This is the new one. <laughs> And we're gonna go like this. Slide it back in that little hole right there. And then there's a little spacer here, so let's get the the bolt in. I'm gonna do it like that. And the spacer, slip it through there. It's a tight fit, so you're gonna have to thread it. If you get it right back where it was, you can tell where it was, it may be a little easier to get in there. Come on. There we go. Almost in there. Just about got it. Slide the washer on, don't drop it. Got a locking washer right here. And I don't know about a locking washer. Whatever you call that thing. And we'll get the bolt on right here. I'm gonna get it better from this side. You find yourself going back and forth from one side to another. All right, let's go ahead and uh, plug it in before you get too far. All right, so I'm gonna, before I plug it in, I'll make sure this thing's set right. So I'm just gonna show you the voltmeter here. So this thing, it's in neutral, so we should have continuity. There we go. So to adjust this thing, you can adjust it back and forth. Not this, but the black thing before we tighten it down, we gotta make sure it's showing. Right there. So I'm gonna tighten that bolt down just like that. I'm probably gonna use a second hand to make sure that I think it needs to go, I think it needs to go towards me just a little bit, towards the front of the machine just a little bit more. And since that bolt's kind of wedged in there, I'm going to use two hands and, and just get it just a little bit more forward, I think, then call it good. But this is how you test the switch to make sure it's working before you plug it in and get it going. So what I'm going to do now is go around to the other side and plug it in. And you can tell here, I didn't really say it at the beginning, but you can see that there's a little mark right there and there's a little mark right there and that's kind of where it needs to be in between so I think we're good to go on that I'm going to tighten this bolt down just a little bit more after I get it plugged in what you got to do from the other side this wire can be a few inches longer note to whoever makes this thing a few inches longer would be nice so I feel like I'm like I don't have much space here all right well, the truth right here, stack it forward and backwards first. 
Switch installed. Already got it working, but I want to show you the voltmeter one more time with this old switch right here. I got one end taped in, and this end right here, I didn't realize I got to shove it in the bottom right there to make sure I get connection. And you can see as it, you can see there is a little copper uh, sleeve right there, and it just makes a connection, and it's supposed to connect right there. So right, right there is when the switch starts to right about there and you can see it pops it pops so right there will let us start the machine so it, it, it it's supposed to be right there so you can see it doesn't it doesn't want to stay on right there it will stay on you have you know I'd say I don't know a half inch of the switch where it's supposed to close or be closed so it, it's probably real dirty in there from all the years of it going back and forth I'm surprised we Never had any issues with the 500 and just the 546. But this switch can be repaired versus getting a new one. I just wanted to get a new one. But I'll do a separate video on this and how to take it apart. For better or for worse, if we can fix it. If we can't fix it, it may be where the switches inside or the contacts inside are just really worn out. But I'd love to see what it looks like inside. So we'll do a separate video on that one. Suppose in a pinch you could jump the wires together. Just you know, unplug it and cross them together. Splice them together. Put a jumper in there. Now I'll get you going. The way to bypass it, certainly won't recommend it, but in a pinch, you could do that. If, you, you know, if you're waiting for this to get in or if you can't get this thing working. And now we were jiggling the wires right here. I was telling the, the guys to jiggle the wires right here and, and get it started. But if you really look, the wires go into here. So yeah, I guess we're kind of jiggling the wires to get it going, but I'm not sure how that was working for us. but. I'll do a separate video too on how to use a voltmeter. I'll bring my digital one here, this analog. We got one here at the, the arena. It works, I like it. I kinda like the analog one certain times better than the digital one. But I'll do a separate video on this, how to do continuity, how to test for voltage on DC, AC. Just some simple stuff, because that's all I really know. I think it's handy to know how to use one of these things in this case right here in these situations. All right, throw a comment down there, because comments always make the channel better. Especially if you've done this already, let me know how you've done it. If there's some tricks or I didn't really want to take these bolts off. You can see they're marked right there. They're torqued down, but they're 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 torqued down hard and they're marked so you know where they are and if they've moved anywhere. So I didn't want to mess with the linkage to the transmission at all. So I that's I did what I did how I did it. So go and comment below if there's any steps along the way you think I could prove or something I could do better. Like hey, you know, this would have been a little bit easier to do it this way. So first time I've done it, it took me about I said it took me about an hour, and it, it, a little more because I have to, you know, do some recording and stuff like that. But I anticipated about an hour to do this. There's a couple, you know, it wasn't really difficult, but there's a couple spots here to get, like, get this pin out and to get this thing unbolted and stuff. If I had to do it again, it'd be much easier. I know how to approach it. Since I haven't done it before, I was proceeding with a little cautiously. They want to mess anything up, make things worse. Again, throw a comment down there because comments always make the channel better. That's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for watching. As always, hope you learned something. The Global Glass Man says, stay cool.